Okay, good. So here's the deal. DS-106, not necessarily running as a class here at Mary Washington, but Michael Branson Smith and Cheryl Colin might be playing with their classes along the DS-106 model. We might even bring it into the DS-106 course. But I, for one, as well as Martha, Tim, and Andy, and I think Todd is also interested in playing along in whatever we come up with. So I'm kind of thinking about this semester as a free-form DS-106, where if other people run the course, like Michael or Cheryl, we'll play around with that. I know I'll comment and be a part of that. But then I'm also going to regularly do assignments and also kind of do some tutorials for students as they're working on assignments because that's something I want to build up in the DS-106 thing now. So I totally want to do DS-106. I don't care if I'm teaching the class or not. I want to be a part of it. And then the idea is can we get some narrative to tie everything together so that we can actually have a regular kind of narrative playing along. So that's what I kind of left off with. I know there's some questions like Tom Woodward brought up about whether we have a non-fiction narrative or fiction narrative. Um, I personally would much rather have a fiction narrative to have fun with and like the apocalypse thing it totally appeals to me. But I don't care about that. I just want to know how Michael, Todd, uh, Cheryl, and uh, Dr. Garcia, how do you guys feel about this? You can go one at a time. I'll hit you first. Cheryl, how do you feel about this? You said you wanted me to talk. I want you to talk, uh, if you do. So I Started teaching um, an experimental design. It's not really a physical story. Like Can you hear it? Just the visual and audio and audio. Uh, uh, but it's more about putting your digital digital identity um, than it is a, a, a story that. Are you guys hearing me? Okay. I'm not. To be honest with you, I'm not really hearing you. Are you on wireless right now? I might. I might have to go change out. It's getting better. Better? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um. Hey, come back to me, and I'll see what I can Okay. Find. We'll come back to you in a second, Cheryl. You get that going, Michael. What do you think? Um. Oh, wait, well, I think about, can you guys hear me well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, about about the course it, on DS-106's site or about uh, the overall narrative ideas? Yeah, both. Okay, well, first, the course, I mean, I think it would be amazing. I have actually two sections of a course of 20 students each that's technically a hybrid course, so it's half face-to-face -face and half online. Awesome. So it's going to be living online anyway for a large amount. And um, nice. you know, you know, I think it's gonna freak them out, but I'm I'm really excited about the idea of pu pushing them out into this open world. And um, you know, I, I wonder if you guys, I, I don't want to put too much pressure on you guys though, but facilitating them through the DS106 site, like you know, getting them set up is one thing in terms of uh, you know they have to set up their blogs, and then we have to get you their their feeds and whatnot. Um, but I don't want it to be any too much. If, if that's okay, then we, we're we're in. And I'm, then yeah, I'm in love with um, that idea. And I think it's fun. And, and, and as far as the syllabus goes, like you know, there's you know this this course is being modified. Our course used to be this uh, straightforward portrait doc course, uh, really very video centric and you know basics of tools of Final Cut Pro and whatnot. But it was an intro course for a you know a media major, and we're we're excited for this to be like a new foundation and getting students awesome. to have their their own domains from the moment they get into into our major. So we think it's a really great idea. Awesome. Um, so when so does that's you, why I'm excited about it. When does and your then course more start importantly, here? not only they're getting into the major, but they're getting into a community. That's what I'm really excited about. Yeah, yeah that's you know to think that like as new cohorts of students take that intro course. Pretty, and we run it every semester, at least 20 students a semester, then you have this growing number of students that have tried it, and there's at least always, it seems like, two or three that hang out forever. That's right. And then that'll just keep the community growing. Okay. And then my colleague Daniel, you know, who's a, who runs our, our advanced like TV classes, 
he's already been thinking about ways like how his advanced students could start contributing to the narrative too, especially after they've taken the class. Like he's doing this um, motion graphics course this semester, and he's like, okay, well, let's say there's a disaster. Maybe I could gear my students toward building like basically motion graphic props for some crazy green screen or something <laughs> like that, you know, which would be awesome, which we yeah, thought awesome. about like how do you take it to the next advanced class and some of the ways it's like, well, then they become some of the, the builders of materials and stuff, you yeah, know. I love it. Um, so that's, that's, that's where I am at. And as far as the narrative, I mean, I think that disaster narrative is pretty fun. Um, I watched uh, Poseidon Adventure again for the first time in like a few years. And it, it's got some good stuff, like good ideas. I, I took notes and I was looking at them. And the notion of, you know, uh, uh, there's one of the big things is like there's the Ernest Borgnine character versus Gene Hackman. And you, you have, you, there's alliances like who knows the right way to survive and stuff like that. And totally. So people could have to choose and then advocate for their way of surviving and things like that. I think that's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, other, a lot of other stuff and, and uh, um, what was that? You know, the notion of uh, it, at some point, well, one of the uh, instructors have to go down with the ship as it, it gets destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we get to have people dying, which would be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and one of the Poseidon Adventure was, a, was the, 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 the ship was forced into this. It was kind of like a Titanic situation where the captain knew better uh, than to continue on. But the corporate forces are like, we must continue. And so, you know, Leslie Nielsen has so, a great, you irresponsible bastard. That's right. <laughs> ahead. We, we could have the, the, you know, educate the institution as the corporate force. Yeah, and then yeah, like yeah. The professors no, and I was are thinking going we to figure out an educational Cut disaster. Out. Like uh, schools are shutting down for some reason and we're like telling the students like there's no class anymore and we're going to have to figure this out, how they can still get taught and things like that maybe. Well, tell me about this fiction versus nonfiction thing, because I did a very controversial tweet, I guess, talking about DS-106 in the fall, and a lot of people were like, oh, don't make it a story, don't make it some, you know, fictional thing, Ta have something with a more greater narrative to it. Yeah. And it seemed like there were a lot of people on the fence. Dr. Garcia, who more does stuff with the radio, uh, and I'm trying to remember who else, I think Julia Forsyth and Tom Woodward were all sort of saying, you know... Don't do something fake. Do something real. I personally would much rather do something fake and have fun with it and allude maybe to the real and play with the real. But I think when you take yourself too seriously or you play that documentary effect, I mean, I don't know. I mean, for me, it would feel like labor, like work. Yeah. When you do it, it's this kind of fictional thing that any day could be a new story and you're just playing around with it and your creativity and imagination is the limit. I personally, not that documentary film can't be like that, not mm -hmm. that good stuff, but it's just for me, I would much prefer the, non, the fictional stuff. That's just a preference. I think you can say just as much critically about a culture in a moment through fiction as you can through nonfiction. I think that yeah. distinction is somewhat overwrought. Well, my whole argument with it on Twitter was just that I feel like when you've got that fictional narrative, it, it leads to a lot more creativity. I feel like, you know, the, the summer of oblivion is, you know, proof of concept for that. That, like, when you give people the bat, when you put boundaries in it and say, we're just going to talk about this or we're just going to do this little thing, oh, okay, that's fine. But when you say, do a radio show and just sky's the limit, do whatever you want, then you get the pirates and stuff. And I know Lou yeah. McGill's watching. It's like, you know, yeah, then, awesome. then you yeah. get all this fun fictional narrative and I, I think that that's where you can really have students creating stuff that's going to be awesome for portfolio work yeah and i think you can still do great nonfiction stuff i'm not saying that a class couldn't mm -hmm. but i know if like i was going to be an integral part of a class and it was you know i knew i was going to put in a lot of work to it and i was going to be one of the people driving it i guess i would want to go with the thing i want to do and feel more comfortable with and that would be why i'd throw it back at michael or at cheryl right. if they're going to be doing the class like what do you guys want to do? Because it doesn't really matter in this sense. What we want to do, we'll play around no matter what. We'll do whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll come up with whatever. <laughs> yep. Cheryl, so, can you can you try now? Are you are you, are you mic'd up? All right. She's on. Uh oh. She doesn't have video. She's been chatting. No, so I see her in the chat though. Okay. Yeah, and we can't read the chat, so. Yeah, we can't read the chat from here, uh, Cheryl. Yeah. She says, uh, I'm going to ask her to drop, to tell her to drop the video and try to just do the uh, audio and see if that will make a difference. Yeah, that might Sounds make good. a difference. 
So, Todd, what do you think? Sir, I, I vote fiction. Um, I, I, I like stories, and I think you're absolutely right that, that fiction really is, a, is the same. It's telling the same stuff, but in a, for a class like this. And I think it's, it's more creative, more open to possibilities. And um, I, I just like reading story. I, I get more from a historical fiction about that time than I would, I think, the actual documentation. But that's just my preference. Yeah. But I, I think what Michael, Michael's thing is, um, to me, it's almost like, what he's doing with asking them to create their own space um, just from the architecture of the class, I think that that was one of the fascinating things about the first DS106 DS for me was just this idea of syndicating feeds into one single site. I mean, just the architecture yeah. of that yeah. radically changed the game. So I vote that that people like Cheryl or Michael, I mean, I, I am, right now, I'm so into do, talking with teachers about creating their own domains because I just feel like, you know, that, that's a hugely empowering thing in this day and age. And, yeah. and like you were saying with, like with art students, I mean, what could be more valuable these days to them as a marketing tool, as a communication tool, as a whatever than, than actually learning to own and operate their own domain. So I kind of like that going first. And then once that container is built, whether they feed into DS106 or whether that you create your own site and have them do it, um, you know, then you can kind of pour in some, some narrative into that feed. And, that's right. And whether it's fiction or nonfiction, I think that's... Well, I would love the idea... Set. I mean, going on what you said, Todd, and playing off what you said, Michael, too, a little bit, is I would love the idea if DTLT maybe comes in as the remote newsroom that talks to a domain of one's own and that does the tutorials online through the video and brings people in like you, Todd, to say why it's so important. But then here's a step-by-step -step of how you do it as you're going along. And so, like, I would love it if, like, you outsource that part of your class, Michael, like you talked about it, and you said, like, watch this video, get on this live feed, to learn yeah. how to do it and ask them questions and we'll get them in and so like we can help you teach that whole part of the class get you up with it or if you want to teach it you go ahead and do it but then that introduces us to them as a kind of part of the class and then yeah. we keep on coming back in with these news kind of informational things and then the story starts subtly taking on shape like yeah. as it did with the oblivion no that's i mean that's what i found exciting like i think that you know, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm on board with the domain. To me, I, I really think it's a very, I mean, for us, since it's an intro course, we want it to be that foundation. And I think it's a great rationale, like, that they don't hear. I mean, it's a, it's a rationale that faculty don't even hear enough, you know. So, um, so yeah, I'm on board with that. And then we'll figure out, I, I, I mean, the, the, a lot of the assignments are fabulous, and we'll figure them out. Um, but uh, the narrative is going to be fun, and I think it'll be fun if we can figure out ways of having short chats or, or whatever about, like, ideas. Like, I think that ultimately is the value in the building a narrative comes from is you have these brief moments to, like, say, okay, let's, let's throw this at everybody this week and see yeah. how they react. Exactly. Um, or maybe it's over a two-week cycle, you know. I love it. Cheryl, did you get back in? When it is, like, one of the things that's fun, too, is um, – this, the, you know, because everybody was talking about like how how do we get them, and it makes me think of a combination of uh, you know, the, you know, have you guys ever heard of the forty-hour uh, film festival concepts? Yes. Yeah. You know, where basically all these filmmakers show up at a location, and they're they all agree to make a movie in two days, and they give you certain things that have to be part of the movie, like it has to be of a certain theme, or it has you have to see a woman in a red dress, and you have to see this or that, and. Um, you know, I think that's one of the ways that we could craft assignments slash and mix that with some 
in a, in a sense, some choose your own adventure style ideas. You know, you know, you know Mar- Martha Berta said that a lot during the summer course, she would do that. She'd have them in her classroom and she'd say, all right, here's what you're doing right now. Here's your, here's your, you know, few restrictions that you've got to do based on this, do this assignment, now go and do it. And within one hour they had to come up with something. And she said that was some of the best work. Yeah. And they didn't, you know, right. it wasn't, there wasn't a worry about, you know, you have this much time because to turn in an assignment because it had to have it, had, had to be done by the end of that class period. Uh, right. So yeah, I love that idea of rapid prototyping online, and that's like where uh-huh. Photoshop it, Photoshop Pong, came into being. Like where you do one thing, you throw it to someone else, they Photoshop it, you throw it back, and then you mm-hmm. have something. Like uh, I would okay. love it if we could rapid prototype some of those events that you're talking about, and maybe attach them to like, oh, you know, someone went missing, something happened, do a design poster, do an audio right. commercial, you know, get the yeah. word out there, do an Amber report, whatever it is, you know. It's right. like, it's a daily shoot. It's a daily shoot in a design aspect of it. It's not just taking a picture, but it's saying, here's what we want you to do today, now do it, and then we'll feed in the results of it on this page, and you get to see it blossom over the period of 24 or 48 hours yeah. from that assignment. And just keeping it loose oftentimes allows this, everything to start emerging, and then by week three or four, we'll have an idea of where we're going, and people will start locking into character. People will start doing stuff yeah. and start getting crazy. And then the students yeah. who want to play along full blown will, and those who yeah. don't will still be able to do the assignments and get by. Yeah, and you know what I, I like is, is I, I like our, I, the idea of not telling them about the narrative at first. <laughs> yeah, don't tell them anything. Totally. <laughs> Especially and if we go with the disaster thing. <laughs> that's the right. Disaster thing we get to literally like spring on them. That's right. Uh, that's brilliant. And the motion stuff is great. Cheryl, you're back in. So what do you think, yes. Cheryl? Have you ca- have you followed some of this? Can, can you guys hear me? This yes, time? we can hear yep. you great. Perfectly. Okay, great. So um, my class that I have a class starting Tuesday. That's an experimental class. It's called Design for Social Media, and so it's not really a digital storytelling. Um, I, I, I have been following you, and I, I will get to what I think, I swear. Oh, no, no, please. Um, but um, I just wanted to, to go back and tell you, like, my, my situation is a little bit different. Um, but I think the idea that I want to pursue with this class is designing a digital identity and setting goals for what you're going to get out of your participation in various forms of social media. Um, and then how do you decide whether the designs that you're building that go with it, like what you put on your Twitter page or what you do in a Facebook page or what you do um, on your WordPress blog. I will have everybody make their own uh, WordPress or some type of blog. But um, I like document your process, see if you got the types of results you were expecting or if something else happened, and then lather and rinse and repeat and yeah. increase your participation. So that's sort of what my class is going to do. There's no reason that they couldn't join DS106 Radio if any of the students want to go that way. Um, But what I'm ending up with as a group of students, just based on emails I've been sent so far, is some people are interested in marketing, some people want to make their own website. Um, So I kind of want my students' goals to drive what they get to do and the ways that they get to participate. And I may, like if they're not coming up with ideas, I may go ahead and introduce a little fictional element that we can all play with. And um, like Jim was saying a minute ago, keep it loose so that I can see, you know, where they want to go. And then I can add in things that would uh, support them in that, but like at the same time throw them a curve or a challenge and see what they do with it. And what, what I'm most interested in is what sort of community will I end up with and can it can it join in with with DS 106 somehow but I don't know if it's appropriate for me to actually say use the DS 106 site use some assignments from it definitely um, use maybe a lot of the things that go with it but I, yeah I'm not not right you're really sure how my class fits exactly so I'd love to hear your guys thoughts on that I would love to and okay go and ahead. in regard personal element and I think it's you converted me a little bit like I'm more of a keep it real person, like do something real. But if my students want to play, I definitely would go with fiction and play with them. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so I, I think I'd like to see a mix of both in my class. Yeah. 
Well, one of the things I'll speak to right away is what I like about possibly when your students get a uh, blog or WordPress or whatever they do, however they do that, one of the things to think about is if you have a list of their URLs and of their sites and if they create a profile on the DS106 site, what that will afford is it doesn't have to be the main home for them. They don't even have to think about it too much. But what it can become is a place for them to have an audience besides the 25 people in your class. And one of the things that's been nice about DS106 as a course site is that you read people's work and you don't know who's where. Like you don't know who's at CUNY, you don't know who's at UMW, you don't know who's at Arizona. So you start to yeah, see no. them as an identity apart from a class, which is one yeah, thing that might be, and it might be an immediate value to your students, no matter what they want to do, Cheryl. Um, oh so yeah, that's I, I completely agree. I think that I, that I want, if 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 we don't all create profiles at the DS one hundred and six site, I still want to talk to you about what plugin that is that sucks in everybody's. Um, Yep. category feed from their blog because I'm still going to need one place to go to look at it all for grading purposes. That's right. Um, so, you know, I need to set up something similar if we don't use DS-106. Um, but then I'd, I would encourage them to join DS-106 as well. And I'm still, um, I'm planning to uh, make my class open participation um, like yours was so that I, I can invite people from across the web to play along with us even though they're not registered in the class. That's but right. I I haven't even begun setting it up yet, so I don't know how successful I'm going to be doing that before Tuesday. Um, but, you know, I'm, that's the point of the class is for me to show the students, hey, you know, you can build it um, on the fly and change it later and make yeah. it better, faster, stronger. So, um, you know, it's okay if they see me setting it up. Well, one of the things, too, is that if you create a space like that, and you use feed WordPress, which is what we're using for aggregation wherever you use it, you can actually, we could take the feed off of that Uber blog and pull it into DS106 because one of the things oh, about that, that <laughs> to me that's interesting, is that we can start to see those people and follow them, and it gives us a place whereby we can do it. And then they'll get comments from people who they don't know, and they're like, what? And that, to me, makes all the difference, is when whatever you're doing is when people start commenting and you know people are reading, and whether or not they choose to play along with the narrative or whatever, is kind of neither here nor there. It's that idea of having that community that you're talking about so that when they're doing their stuff, they're not doing it like the boy in the plastic bubble, right? Yeah, right. It's, this, it's this idea yeah. of having an audience. You yeah. know, and if you have an audience, your, your narrative changes a bit. The way you present things changes. And I think, you know, especially for your class, Cher, where it's about digital, digital and social media and identity and social media, it's perfect to, to have people looking at you while you're doing the thing because otherwise it's just you doing it in your dorm room and that's it and this is what it is and presenting it whereas social media is about having an audience yeah right and just just so you know at my community college we have no dorm rooms so everybody <laughs> lives in okay. housing somewhere else um, I'm gonna have 13 students so far are all that registered um, okay. so it's a nice small group and the people that will be coming in I know a few of them think that they're gonna learn how to market their business better. And I've already emailed them and said that is so not what, not what I'm about, but if that's your goal, you know, I'll try to help you. I'll try to help point you to resources and you can you can do the research and you can learn about it while you're in my class. But um, you know, I'm not a marketer, I'm a designer, so I'm gonna help you like with the design process is you set a goal, you put your design out there and you see if the design supported your goal or not. And if it didn't then you work out what do I change to make this work better. Um, so if your goal is marketing, fine. And if your goal is getting followers, that's fine. And if your goal is actually connecting with people, that's even better. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I will have some business people. I will have some more traditional students. I'll have um, adults returning. Um, I'll have people that are in their 40s that just want to learn how to make something work on the web. I'll have people who are 19, you know, See, I'll have awesome. a, a pretty good mix of people on my own. And then if you add in DS-106 community, it'll be really great. Yeah, and I want to kind of repay the favor of you. I mean, all the work you did for various students um, over the summer of oblivion was amazing. But then I left you. <laughs> well, you know, you went to the UK. Anyone who goes to the UK is invaluable. To, I mean, no, of no value to me, let me put it that way. Um, because, you know, I'm an American, damn it. Um, 
But no, we more to the point. We were in the UK. <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that terrible? We were there to try the beer. What can I say? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to do a Google Hangout with Lisa Lane in like three minutes. But oh, no. Can I, so I, I, can I just make one quick comment here about the, the, the DS106 community and the structure or the shape of that thing that happened, which was this DS106.us and stuff going in there. You know, I think the big goal of this is to create um, other communities like that, not to replicate what DS106 was. So, Good idea. And, but yeah. then at the same time, somehow, I hope for me certainly to tie any any participation that I have in some other class somehow into my contributions to this this kind of base DS106 environment, which to me is about storytelling, but it's also about teaching and learning at a much larger scale, like, like why can't we do this at, at other institutions and in other courses like Michael and Cheryl are doing. So, um, I, I um, yeah. Well, I, I agree with you. I got. And I think the point you make is a good one. It's like, I don't want DS-106 like I'm pushing that like it's crack. You know, like use DS one hundred and six. You know, you're not Dude, doing I'm it. buying, man. Exactly. Give me my fix. I don't want to do that. But I'm just thinking, like, that's kind of where we started to build the community, and that's one way to kind of, like, channel it. But I think you're right, Todd. I mean, it's also about people jumping out, doing their own communities based on it, and then seeing what goes. So, yeah, absolutely. So anyway, I gotta go. I, this is awesome, and uh, thank all of you for everything you guys do. I think that this is a uh, really an important step in what the learning environment can look like, and, and the opportunity we all have to share with our ideas with one another. Yeah. And um, I gotta go. All right. Take care, Todd. Bye. Thanks for joining us. See ya. See ya. So, let me ask you this, Cheryl. You said your class starts on Tuesday. Michael, when does your class start? My mine starts on Monday, but um, you know it's okay to ease them in it in a sense. Like, you know, the first week is just going to be about the domain stuff, really, in my mind. Um, Me too. Because it because it has the face to face aspect to it, and then they get tossed online. But I I do think it'd be cool, and I I'm going to do them myself, but do the the broadcast like once a week, uh, yeah. just to to get that going right from the beginning. But the the idea is like if if it goes the route of like you know, you doing, talking about the domain of your own stuff, and I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of that because it's, I mean, no, no reason to reinvent like a great, a great speech in a sense in description. Um, you know, I, I'm flexible about how it happens, like, because it's only two hours I see them uh, that first Monday, and I'm doing two sections, and gotcha. they're going to be coming in thinking the course was the way it used to be, and it's fine, like, I, they know, but... Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little crazy in the first week or two, but it's there, it's such the semester ultimately is so long, and, and after having gone through the five week compressed, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a piece of cake in yeah. comparison. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Because the five week thing is crazy, you know. Um, it's nuts. And uh, you know, so I think there's a lot of there could be a little bit of slowing it up, um, but I think the big decision is yeah. I mean, I definitely could build a, a new space for them to aggregate to, but I'm. I want to hear what you think about, like, what is it, what, do you want to go that direction of having, you know, external institutions with registered students, basically, because if, if we were talking about this in the spring, like, would there literally be UMW students and community students and instructors that have their own students that they're in, in charge of with the final, only, with the only thing that you really care about is, like, yes, they have to deal with the grading aspect, but in other ways, it's like this you know, mix of team teaching and things like that, you know? Yeah, I like that. I mean, and I think that you could do both, right? You could filter everyone into DS-106 if you wanted to, but then also what Martha did is she had a separate site within DS-106, although you could do this anywhere, which had just uh -huh. your student stuff. So you could filter by that. And I think that's basically what Cheryl was talking about, too, is however, wherever you do that, the idea of bringing them into DS-106.us on top of that is just to kind of get that flow of um, allowing us to team teach and give feedback and just play with the narrative as it emerges. That's what I'd like. But do you think, do you, do you, okay, I mean, do you think that the, those little, how did Martha's students, did they go to that main feed or did they just tend to hang out in the, in the feed of uh, 
Because it was different, because Martha wasn't teaching technically an open course, yeah. right? I mean, the thing is, is you want them probably, you're right, I mean, if you segregate out just those blogs for the class, there's always yeah. the possibility that that's all they'll see. You know, so there's always an easy way for you to segregate out your course, course sites by just saying them to tag it in a particular way, and then you can filter on DS-106 by tag, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that well, might be a way. How did you group in the sidebar? Like, who was in that? Wasn't I just did that manually. You manually put it in there. I just manually hear, said, here's all your yeah. RSSs. This is the, you know, your college uh, section one group, your college section two group. I just grabbed their RSS, uh, their URLs, and put them in a, a links thing in the sidebar. So I think ultimately, like, it can be up to the instructor. In Cheryl's case, you can probably say, I'm going to have my own little course site. If you decide to go the right way, you want to use feed WordPress and feed them into just your site and use that. And we can, we can pull it in and see it, but your students don't have to interact with it. Whereas, Michael, in your case, you can still create your own site for yourself to be able to just see your student work and be able to grade it and that kind of thing. But the communication to your students can definitely still be, you go to DS-106 to see everybody's work. Yeah. And that the front-facing... It's kind of funny because a lot of, I feel like, I mean, as a, as a participant, a lot of my viewing of other work came from just actually looking at postings via Twitter, not even always through the DS-106 site. That's right. That's just But maybe that place. was just because I was an open participant and I wasn't paying... I mean, I did, I did often go to DS-106 and look at the feed and, like, you know, pile, filter through, like, say, the top six or seven and make comments or something like that. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely a little bit of both. Um, yeah. And I think that's right. Yeah. And having them all there and me, like, I would just plow through the DS-106, that U.S. site, because then I would, could be thorough. And I could right. go through and see everyone, what they'd written recently, and then i get daily digests through email. Right. So then I get a sense. Mm -hmm. And that's just a way of me keeping it. And I'm thinking a way for me to keeping on top of it. I could do RSS. I could look at DS-106. But DS-106 provides that kind of forward-facing space where all the work comes in. And then the community hopefully uses that. We could even connect that to a Twitter account, get that out on Twitter, however we want to do it. Like I yeah. said, I don't want to push DS-106 like crack. But for me, it's the place to bring in that audience, hopefully. But it doesn't have to be the only place, and it doesn't necessarily you know, exclude doing in your own space, like Tim well, was saying. And something that excites me, I think, the fact that Mary Washington is not involved in like having to actually run the course to where we can be participants, is that one of the things that we've wanted to work on is just working on the presentation of the DS-106 yeah. site, how you gather information. Right now it's a fire hose and it's really hard to capture the good stuff. Some, you know, the, the cream rises to the top, but at the same time it's hard to really get a grasp on everything that's happening. So things like being able for someone who's looking at the feed to just do a simple check, yes, I like that, and then filter how many posts have, who has the most likes this week, and yeah. that kind of thing. And then to be able to see what the good stuff is and where the stuff's happening and what courses. So that's something Thing where I think Mary Washington's going to get to play around a lot here in right. the office of just you know working on the site to, to get a better visual presentation of what's happening and where. Because you guys have the hard work now. You're yeah. actually <laughs> teaching. We can actually yeah. play and comment ah, crap. I'm and have fun. <laughs> and that's good to be on the other side. Yeah, it must be. I really enjoyed being on the other side for DS-106, although I, I'm still disappointed that I didn't get the finish. The class. It's it's actually still sitting in my RS, RSS reader waiting for me to go through and comment on posts anyway. <laughs> Click all that <laughs> and Which move on. Which is like on. a plan. You were awesome. It may not happen. I might have to clear my, my, my RSS reader and just move on. But I would still like to go see how everything finished. I still don't know what happened in the end of the narrative. So <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Yeah, um, yeah. Watch the videos. Yeah, I will. I will. So... I don't know the um, the idea, I like the idea that I can set up my site for my my class and I can create the little Uber feed for my individual students and I can also say you know if anybody online wants to participate through that site they can do so but then sucking that Uber feed into DS106 sounds awesome to me if that's okay with you guys That's perfect absolutely Yeah So here's what I mean here's what we can do and I say you know what treat it low and mellow and then as it develops it's great but I mean the domain of one's own however you want to go that whether it's through like a wordpress.com site or a blogger site 
or full-blown web hosting and domain that they buy and, and thing. I have some documentation on that, and I'd be more than happy as you guys, guys get started to come into your classes or to do a video like uh, DTLT today or to start with the kind of newsroom, like here's a domain of one's own, and kind of play around with the narrative and get it going next week, say by Monday, because I know that's when you're starting, um, work on it over the weekend, but just have something up and ready to go um, as you guys get started. I'm up with that, but I don't want to, if you guys want to take the first day and take a break and then maybe come back another day, but that's something, I mean, I'm up and running. We'll get that stuff into DS106 or wherever. I'll help you get that set up and we'll go. Right. I would love the help. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I would love some help with that. Um, yeah, this, this is I was at least going to start with a similar email to your first one that says, you know, you need to set up these things. Yeah. And, you know, here's your, if you need some support with it, I will support you in it. My class is a hybrid, so normally it would meet twice a week. We're going to meet once a week every Tuesday and offload everything else to online. So I will get uh, FaceTime with the students to help them with stuff like that. Good. without having to do it only through office hours. So, so that'll perfect. be good. Okay. So let's talk about that. Same with you, Michael. You have a hybrid, too? I do have a hybrid, too, yeah. And we're meeting on Monday. Um, and I'm, I'm game to, uh, to, like, have their first broadcast. It can be, you know, on, like, it'll be, it'll be like, you know, the summer of oblivion where there's a live broadcast and they can check in and listen after that Monday. Um, because it, it, it can't be simultaneous because the sections are, uh, uh, they follow one another on Monday anyway. So it couldn't be, it's not going to be live for everyone regardless. That's right. Um, so there's that. And I'm just, in my mind, I'm just still thinking about the, you know, setting up the other site thing and, and aggregating feeds to it is fine. The, the one thing I think about that is, um, I just worry about the students that that's where they'll spend all their time. Instead yeah. of going to the main DS106 site, that's that's where I that's where I think that that tension exists in terms of you know putting them in different spaces, and I don't know. I mean, sometimes it's just an organizational issue, but you know. Well, and I'm lucky yeah, in that way because I we're supposed to be using all kinds of different spaces, whichever ones mm -hmm. they want to, plus the ones I make them use. Ha ha ha. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I can, it's, it's, it's not a, there's something about that, that they know from the get-go that they're part of this community and they can expect, and one of the things that's obviously so exciting about it is the moment they push their first, like, feed in there, they're getting feedback from people they don't even know, never, you know, they're not even going to know, they're not even part of their class, you know? Um, right. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can go either way, like, going, you know, Forgoing an aggregation, uh, you know, my own Uber site, or in going directly in, or vice versa, I, I can go either way. Yeah. Well, well, you think about that. I mean, if, I, I'm more than happy to have you set, have them set up to, uh, profiles on DS106 and jump right in for the okay. very reasons you talked about community. Like Uber site is just if you know, I can understand that the problem with the DS106.us site technically, I mean, there is, and that's what Tim had alluded to is that, you know, it's not always so easy to navigate, and there's a lot of stuff coming at you. So yeah. that might be one of the ways. But if you have them tag it like York Sec 1 or something like that, we can actually filter it by all their posts by a category that's true. tag. So that's one yeah, way to Yeah, and I, I can also, you know, aggregate just their feeds myself, you know what I mean? So I'm not that's right. myself necessarily missing anything. Yeah, you could do that um, in G Reader or whatever. Yeah. You know, so I'm not, like, for my own like purposes of making sure I'm on top of individuals, uh, that's not a, that's not a problem. I can, you know, I. In, ultimately, you have their sites and you can look at their feeds and things like that. So I'll, I can do that, and you know, for your own archival purposes, I think there's probably a lot of value to that. Yeah. Um, I'm just more concerned of, and so that's easy. Like it's more of the space that they build. Um, I just want the. I, I kind of. So there's a part of me that I enjoy. You go into ds106.us and you're like, oh, there's that front page and there's all these feeds and and they're going through them and trying to find people to comment on. And I want them to not feel like, oh, if there's this other space, I'm going to go there first and just focus on my own class. And yeah. and, and and that's the place they'll go first just to do all their commenting. Um, 
because they're also going to be amazed to see their 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 instructors making stuff like that. So rarely happens. Yeah, and it's you a know, where the, yeah. the, the instructors participating in content production with with the students. You know, it's big. Yeah, I have a um, last semester I taught a Photoshop class, and we used a WordPress blog for the students to publish a lot of their tutorial work and document their processes and stuff and they really loved that. The site, um, I was sort of developing the site as we went along so at first it had like two pages like a start here page and you know that was it. And then I started adding calendars, posting assignments and they, a lot of them commented that I really loved seeing you build this. Um, yeah. Like it showed me a lot of what's possible even though the class isn't related to the web. Um, so they they really like that, and I think it's um, yeah, like doing it with your students the way that um, Jim started with DS 106, building that with them and letting them participate in it. They they just get so excited about it compared to learning, you know, software out of a book. Uh, so so yeah, right. I think it's great. Take care, Lou. I'm sorry, Lou's taking off from the chat. We have been monitoring oh. the chat, Lou. But and you're awesome, and I still have to comment on your awesome DS106 final post. Um, and Jason Green, sorry about the uh, the uh, reverb. Yeah. But Cheryl, I agree with that, and I agree that this idea of building alongside them and uh -huh. watching it go um, and watching it just develop is huge. And that's I mean that's something you don't. It's something on the other side with a prefabbed site like DS106, you're not going to see that to the same degree. But you are going to see other people creating stuff, like you said, Michael, particularly yeah. your faculty and other people who, like, you don't even know. Which, right. that's a trip. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's going to really, yeah, they, they, you know, the, the notion that they know that I have my domain out there and I'm going to be constantly making stuff with them and, and doing daily shoots, I think that's always a big part of it is they see how you act and behave and comment and they feed off of that, you know? That's right. Um, Absolutely. And... And then the story side, gosh, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, the story side's interesting, too, because you can't predict it. It's yeah. like you introduce the unpredictable, which for me is the real art. It's the, you know, mm -hmm. it's the real value, and, and for me, the art of a class is to introduce that unpredictability and let people run with it and be able to do it. Yeah. So. All right, I have to go, too. I have to, I have a, I have to do advising, sadly. Yeah. Um, well, this has been a good conversation. Oh, what? Sadly, that's a good thing to do. <laughs> no, no, they shove us in an atrium. It's hysterical. Oh, dear. Like, there's like 20 faculty in a big giant room. We each represent a different department, and um, we help everybody. But it's cool. Okay, so right. as a follow-up, I know it's like what Thursday. I so know. Maybe, yeah. maybe I'll email you too, or we'll start getting something running. So that we get a sense of where it is. Just so you know, if you need anything or if you need us, Mary Washington is here to support you now because you've done it for us. <laughs> so now, well, yeah, thanks. Sorry, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm actually setting up a WordPress while we're talking. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'll be ready when that email comes with some stuff. stuff. Okay. Right. Yeah, and I'll I'll send you what I what I think too about the the aggregation stuff. Um, Perfect. And account stuff. Let's do so, it. Because it's going to be uh, it, it, this school, like the, our email, our students don't look at their student email at all, like literally at all. So I can't even email them ahead of time. It's just undependable. <laughs> you know, it's, which is the reality of it all. It sucks. But. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying it'll be a slow start either way. And, and, you know, the first day I'll be about, like, all right, this is how the, this is going to function. Now start building, and, and it'll be interesting from there. So let's get this party started. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take, Take care, care guys. Too. Bye, Jimmy. Bye. Bye. Jim, bye, bye. bye. Michael, Cheryl, be good. Bye. All right. so That's exciting stuff. That is. I like the idea that it's moving outside of UMW. And yeah. That, that we're not the, I mean, for a couple of reasons. I think we need to focus, like you said, on the site and the design mm -hmm. of it and just kind of like sharpen it. But, you know, and it's funny, it's like one of the things that came up that I didn't expect to come up today, but I'm glad it did, is, you know, I don't want to treat DS-106 like, go through there, do that. But for me, it just seems like a natural layup. Yeah. Like, your feed comes in, you have the audience, it's easy for me to review because that's where I read everything, and, like, then you're all set. The idea that that might create a problem 
uh, is interesting too. Yeah. In that. The idea that it's interesting, too, is for me is that I want to be on the other side of just creating stuff and playing around with the story. Right. Like, I want all the technical stuff and the domain stuff, which is important to be taken care of. Yeah. But then I want to get into the idea of, because to me, that was the real, the oblivion stuff that really got me was, yeah. then you got into a crazy story, and then you're developing and building for a reason. Well, this has probably been the longest DTLT Today episode, so I think we should probably wrap up. Thanks yeah. to the people who are watching out there, Jason Green, uh, Lou McGill, um, and for anybody else who's following along and preparing for the fall. It's about to begin. That's right. So let's bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> Peace, y'all.